This is not something I've seen on any other Forerunner. Mine is the only one that has this issue. Now, if you thought that was not that bad, you wait until I show you the driver's side. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. So today, today I'm going to over, go over a topic that, to be honest with you, I am quite frankly embarrassed to talk about. What I have here in my hand is actually the paperwork that I got when I first got my uh, Forerunner. So what most of you might not know is that I actually uh, went out of state to get this car. and. Uh, if you see that, I went to a Dodge Chrysler dealer. This vehicle, and I'm going to try to say this with a straight face, was traded in for, drum roll please, are you guys ready? For a Dodge Durango. Now before they, anybody wants to jump on top of me for saying that, yes, for what I understand, they put a very beefed up engine on these lately. But you can understand I bought this car in late 2017. So that Durango was not available back then. So correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that after a few months they realized the mistake they have made. Because this is a great car. I'm sure the Durango is too, but come on, really? You want to compare? Why am I making this video? Okay, so I'm going to put this away. Inside that uh, envelope there, there's a uh, piece of paper that you guys might have heard of, it's called a Carfax. So yes, <laughs> this car has a dirty Carfax. I knew that from the get-go. Actually, the story with this car, it goes beyond that because I had seen this car for the first time on sale in that same dealer in May of 2017. And for some reason, while I was shopping around, I kept going back to it. I just kept going back to it. But the fact that it had a dirty Carfax kept me away from buying it, basically. But one thing I did notice, too, was that the price kept dropping. So when I initially saw this car for sale at this dealership, which is, by the way, in upstate New York, uh, it was roughly an hour and a half away that I traveled to uh, pick it up. Um, it was initially advertised for 25995 and I did not pay that because, uh, like I said, I kept my eye on the car this entire time. And I noticed that the price kept going down. I mean, mind you, the car is sitting in a Dodge dealer. And they, let's face it, they didn't know what they had uh, there or what to do with it. And I guess the clientele just wasn't there for this car. And uh, when I finally saw it dropping down to, are you ready for this? 21000 895 that's it 21,895 there's a reason why I have to remember exactly the price I said to myself that's it I drove up there with my Acura TL five speed no I'm sorry six speed manual that I had back then which was uh, coming up on um, three years ownership and about 180,000 miles give it or take crack dashboard and all this other jazz drove up there test drove this thing and I said to myself, you know, I saw the Carfax, but it actually doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty good. So I told the guy, I'll take it. But I said to him, y you guys, like, like, I know how much you guys are asking for it. And it is below the market value at the time it was. Um, but I said to him, you know, the maintenance on this car, I mean... As a guy like me goes over there, I check the car over and, you know, I bring the filters with me to the showroom and I, I say to the guy, listen, I mean, you guys can't sell a car like this. I mean, look at these filters, you know, like trying to give them a little bit of a, listen, I know what I'm buying here. So long story short, I actually ended up paying 21 even because I said to the guy, listen, I'm going to pretend like I didn't see the fact that the car needs all of this. And you guys gonna go ahead and drop the price. You don't wanna do that? 
See you later. I have another one that I'm going to go look at, which I did. It was a silver one, but that silver one was $24,000, which I really at the time couldn't afford. I just I was not in a financial position to be doing that. So that's the big secret, guys. My forerunner uh, added dirty Carfax. I've always known that. It's been hit twice. Yeah, I know. Some of you must be saying to yourselves, wow, you are crazy. Well, this is where I think the value in this video comes into play because I'm going to pose a very important but good question to you guys. One, would you have done the same thing? Would you, knowing that the Carfax was dirty, although it was somewhat of a good deal, still bought the car? Or would you have spent more money instead and bought yourself a car that had a clean Carfax? Although I'm sure some of you can agree with me, a lot of the times the Carfax might be clean, but that doesn't mean the car was not involved in an accident. I've seen this before. We've had cars traded in with a clean Carfax that been in an accident. But that aside, that's what I want to know from you guys. Would you have done the same thing that I did? To me, at the time, I felt like I was saving myself and, the, and my family three, almost $4,000. But as, as you will see in a second here now, I think I made a mistake. I love this car, but I want your honest opinion, guys. I want you to tell me what do you think I should do if you were in my position? What course of action should I take next? Because what I'm about to show you guys, it's probably gonna shock a lot of you. I felt as if the bodywork was very well done back then, but I'm not so sure anymore. I have nothing but respect for people that work in a body shop. I know a lot of the times you guys are meeting deadlines that are imposed to you, probably not using the best procedures because you're just not given enough time or the materials. So I'm not totally mad at you guys and I'm not pointing the finger at every body shop guy out there. But the point I wanna make here is, had the body work been done properly, I think I am pretty sure I would have not been facing this problem. All right, so let's cover some aspects of what's going on body-wise with my car that are extremely, extremely hard to ignore. Now, this, I almost do not want to count this because a lot of these forerunners do have a fitment issue with the bumper in this corner, as I'm sure you guys will attest to that. I'm sure you got a similar problem, so I don't know what to make of this. Now, check out the top of this headlight. Again, this is another common one, but this is why Spoiler alert, I am going to go ahead and replace them as a pair. Now, this is what I was teasing you guys about. If you guys look at this headlight versus that one, you can tell that something weird is going on here. This headlight has been replaced at some point. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what happened here, but uh, I have personally tried to revive this headlight by doing a restoration once. That did not work out very well. Another one, this uh, fog light, I don't know if that's overspray. I really don't know what's going on with the lens, but yes, because I am replacing the headlights, the bumper's coming off. And as you can see, this side is totally not matching that side. I'm replacing everything, meaning fog lights and headlights. Now, <laughs> talk about fitment. I mean, look at the gap on this thing. Like, it, even I sometimes look at this and I cringe when I, when I see it. Another thing bugs me all the time is just gaps in general. Like if you follow the gap on this hood versus fender all the way up, you will see that, yeah, something is definitely not right with this. But you know, these are things that to me at the time, I'm not an expert, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it. And I thought it was not a big deal, but let me show you guys why it is a big deal. And there is no way this is a Toyota issue. I know for a fact it's not because I work on hundreds of forerunners, if not thousands. And this is not something I've seen on any other forerunner. Mine is the only one that has this issue. Now, if you thought that was not that bad, you wait until I show you the driver's side. This is, as they say, the icing on the cake. Here, we'll start with the easy one, if that's easy at all on the eyes. And uh, yeah, 
here we go this is it this to me is really really bothering me because now i've had an estimate from a mako in which they wanna basically respray both of these doors and blend in the entire side of the car and when i say both of these doors meaning front passenger and driver side and i was quoted fifteen hundred dollars but here's the kicker they are not giving me a guarantee why rust you guys already know man if you got rust forget about it it's always going to come back so here's my question to you guys what do i do do i replace the door and if so once i do replace it do i paint it i mean that's a logical thing to do right but maybe some of you can drop down in the comments down below where can i find a door doors actually i should say for this car because the only place that i found doors for it they want nine hundred dollars for a door and as you can see i'm going to need both of them because obviously if i'm going to do this job i got to do it right so that we don't have to deal with this again or the next owner i mean it's heartbreaking i all Honestly, I am embarrassed to even show you guys this, but I hope that this video at least helps somebody see something happen here too, because this car did get rear-ended. I mean, if you don't see a difference in that shade of red, then you need to get your eyes analyzed because that is de definitely 100% different red and it's very noticeable. Um, I didn't mean to sound offensive there, guys, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I just don't want anybody to, in the future, deal with an issue like this. This is why I'm making this video. Uh, what I am going to go ahead now and is replace these uh, lights in the front so that I can at least feel a little better about this car. Because if there's one thing I don't want is to start feeling like I'm going to start neglecting the car. I do not want to do that because rust on that door is definitely causing me to not... Uh, care too much about it you know because i mean look at it there's nothing good that's going to come out of this this just doesn't look right and if you look at the back door there's nothing going on with the back door that's why i 100 percent sure this has to do with the body work that was previously done nothing against body shops but you know it is like and there's there's a lot of indications here that this car was sprayed before you know i'm not an expert and at the time you know I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but you see a couple of spots here and there in which, well, you know, the craftsmanship just wasn't there. You know, the gaps are not necessarily perfect. Some of this paint, honestly, looks like uh, orange peel. That's a really good shot. And that's that, you know. This is my dilemma now. I just don't really know what to do. I'm actually thinking of wrapping this car, to be honest with you. That's definitely a, a look you don't see every day. But let's get cracking. Boy, I tell you, the more and more I look at this car, the more and more stuff I want to fix. But let's face it, guys, we can't get too carried away. Uh, I did try to get these brackets. And just for your information, either one of these two only comes with the condenser. Just a little FYI. So this clearly here is a good shot, not for the simple fact that the nose on this car is gone and it, it does look pretty rad, but let me just show you. So these are telltale signs of you, that your car had body work. So you see the bad light? Well, take a wild guess, aftermarket. This one is not aftermarket. Although, again, but these OEM ones all do this, it starts peeling up top here. No biggie, but if you keep looking in this car, this is what you're gonna find. Sticker there, and get this, front bumper. Oh, you guessed it. Sticker there. Now listen guys, it is what it is. We're gonna keep cracking and keep giving her some love. She's not going anywhere. She's gonna be looking all spiffy in a second. Going for that OEM uh, plus plus look, you know what I mean? Guys, do yourself a favor, replace both of these. The corner where they sit 
can be a little challenging to replace. So do yourself a favor and just pick up a set of these. Or you can get what they come factory with, which is the clear one, and uh, yeah, replace them. And now, of course, guys, they ever so gratifying. Oh, look at that. How does the sound go? So fresh and so clean, clean. Oh. Perfect. You know, I had to share that with you guys. But seriously, what do you guys think? Your thoughts? Did I do okay? Are we looking a little better, at least in this corner? We're making progress, right? I did, good news is, figure out what's causing this, and I will eventually, in a future episode, show you guys and fix it. But for right now, this is how she sits. And yeah, I gotta say, I am super excited. How do we even have two of these? This is crazy. Guys, so there you have it. The secret is out. Uh, it was actually something that I'm not gonna lie. I had a little bit of trouble Talking about it because honestly looking at the side effects five years later. I'm almost a little embarrassed that I Took that step and I thought it would have been okay. I Hope this video helps somebody not make the same mistake. I did If you do think of buying a car that has a dirty Carfax meaning that's been in an accident Just make sure that that body work was done properly you might want to hire somebody that knows a little better than i did and do your own research hey who knows maybe you won't have the same misfortune that i did but at the end of the day listen guys it is what it is she does have a lot of character to say the very least and on this shocking but yet crappy situation i want to thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys on the next one and with all this talk about crap i forgot to mention that uh, you might want to stay tuned for the next episode because well let's just say i uh i believe i corrected the situation